Hello, and welcome back to Historical Terminology, and today we're going to be talking about genocide, which is considered death on a mass scale. The official definition uh, given by the UN is that genocide is an intentional action to destroy an ethnic, national, racial, or religious group um, in whole or in part. Um, and genocide really kind of sprung out of the ideology of nationalism, um, where people um, put a lot of faith and stock in their nation, and so um, eliminating members of other nations or other groups um, became potentially goals of nations trying to become more homogenous. Um, so during, uh, leading up to, during, and then after the First World War is when genocides really became uh, a commonality in uh, the world. And from 1956 to 2016, an estimated 50 million people have been killed during the 43 genocides recognized by the United Nations. The Holocaust is the most com or is the most well known of these genocides, and it was responsible for the murder of six million Jews, which was about two thirds of Europe, Europe's Jewish population, as well as five million other people from groups the Nazis deemed undesirable, that being like the Roma, um, the handicapped and such like that. Uh, Nazi Germany carried out incredibly violent acts against people thought to be undesirable, as well as creating forced work camps and extermination camps in Poland and elsewhere in Eastern Europe. Um, and the atrocities of the Holocaust are so well known by us because it's all been carefully documented by the Nazi bureaucracy. The one thing that the Nazis definitely did very well was keep records. So we know everything that they did and when they did it and even why. Other genocides in history that are notable, um, I mean, they're all notable, but the ones that I picked for the slide are the Armenian Genocide, uh, which happened during World War I, um, the Cambodian Genocide uh, in the 70s. Um, some argue that uh, what's happened to the Native Americans in North and South America could be considered genocide, um, and that would have been happening from 1492 to present. Um, the Hutu, uh, the Rwandan, and the Darfur Genocide all happened in Africa. Um, the Bosnian Genocide happened in um, former Yugoslavia um, in the 90s. And then, sorry for my misspelling here, but the Ugar and the Rohingya Genocides are both happening now in Asia. Um, and we're going to talk about those in just a second. So like I said, the, the Ugars are a Muslim group in China, uh, and the Chinese government has been gathering all of them into these re-education camps, hard in quotations. Um, and it's been reported that the Chinese have been forcibly sterilizing these people, as well as um, physically hurting them or even killing them. Um, however, we don't have a whole lot of evidence to prove that right now because uh, China won't let anybody near these camps. Um, and so we're relying on less than reliable information. Um, the, the, the UN and the world believes the people saying that this is happening, um, but there needs to be more investigating to know what the scope and the scale of all of it is. In Myanmar, we have much better information. We know that the Rohingya are a Muslim group from Myanmar and that they, uh, millions of them have been fleeing into Bangladesh and India and other countries close by to Myanmar because uh, the Myanmar military has been murdering them, burning their villages and uh, raping their, their women and young, women, uh, young girls. So that we have a lot of evidence of um, and uh, it's still developing. So the UN has kind of listed these stages of genocide um, uh, so that we can all learn to understand what's happening when, when these terrible things are about to occur. Um, the first step of genocide is classification, and that's when people are divided into groups, us versus them. Um, and this causes people to distrust of the people of this targeted group. Um, the last line of all these slides is going to say what a... a a plan to stop that at that stage would be how to stop a genocide at that stage. So at the stage of classification, the preventative measure that would be used most would be to develop universalistic institutions that transcend division. So we're trying to get everybody in the nation involved, no matter who they are, what groups they are. The next group after classification would be symbolization, and that's when a symbol is forced onto these despised groups, and so they're easily labeled. Um, symbols can be both physical or verbal. Um, and to combat symbolization, hate symbols can be forbidden. Um, it's kind of like hate speech. In the United States, we have, we have laws against hate speech. 
in Germany, they have laws against both hate speech and hate symbols. So like, you can't really have the Nazi the Nazi flag out anywhere, stuff like that. That's all illegal because not, uh, the Germans are much better at punishing um, and stopping those kind of things than we are. Dehumanization is the next step, and that's when the dominant group will try to deny the humanity of this targeted group. And oftentimes this is done by equating the victims to animals, vermin, insects, or diseases. Um, local and international leaders should condemn the use of hate speech and make it culturally unacceptable, and leaders who incite this kind of genocidal violence should be banned from international travel and have their finances frozen so they can't continue to, to do um, worse things than they already are. After these people are dehumanized, the genocide has to become more organized, and that means there will be special army or militias trained to um, commit the goals of this atrocity. And genocide, remember, is often a government policy. So a government is actively deciding to eliminate this group of people. So it's going through the body of the government. The UN, at this point, would need to impose arms embargoes on these sorts of governments and citizens um, and create commissions to start investigating the things that are happening. Once they're starting to get organized, they're going to start polarizing the nation using um, hate propaganda that they could broadcast through the radio or TV or whatever. Um, and that um, and that's so that they can get people on their side. Um, prevention at this point may mean security protection for people who are leading these smaller groups um, or um, potentially just uh, military defense from other nations coming in to help. After this propaganda has disseminated and people um, are, are buying into this hatred, um, victims are going to be identified and separated out because of their identity. And at this point, the threat of genocidal action is imminent. Um, right at this stage, there's it's an emergency. Things bad things are going to happen. And then finally, after that, um, is what the UN calls an extermination. And we call it an extermination because the killers are um, aren't um, aren't viewing these people as human anymore. They're vermin that needs to be eliminated. Um, and so in their eyes, they think of it as an extermination. So that's what the UN calls it as well. And at this stage, only a rapid, overwhelming armed intervention can stop a genocide. That means military um, interception, uh, intersection into the, into the country where it's happening. Um, and then afterwards, of course, once it's all resolved and taken care of, um, there's always going to be a denial. The people who are perpetrating these crimes aren't going to either say that they've committed a crime or they're going to try to hide the evidence that they did. And that's when an international criminal court would investigate and step in in these matters. Um, they're going to be the ones that are going to stop this kind of thing from and figure out what to do. So next, let's take a look at kind of a case study of, of a more modern example of what might be happening here, where we can actually see the signs. Let's take a look at Trump's America. From the beginning of Trump's candidacy all the way back in 2015, Trump has classified Mexicans as not the greatest people. They're calling them, he's calling them drug dealers, he's calling them rapists. Um, he's trying to classify them as an other. And afterwards, he's been symbolizing them. He's been calling them um, rapists and drug dealers, but he's also targeting people like the Dreamers um, or just anybody with darker skin. Um, and that kind of symbolization and the, the, the idea of the, the border wall has really kind of created this symbol of, of Mexicans as undesirables in the United States. And since moving on from that, he's been trying to dehumanize them. He's been putting um, immigrant children in cages, separating them from his, their families, doing stuff like that, turning them into less than human people, um, making it easier for people to hate them. He's got organization, he's got uh, military, or not military, but he has federal units that are specifically um, supposed to be dealing with this. That would be ICE and uh, the Border Patrol. They're trained for this sort of thing. And it's become very polarizing. Breitbart News and Fox News both um, have been inciting this kind of racial division uh, for years now. Um, and in Fox, it's mainstream. So a lot of people are viewing this information and, and absorbing it. Um, and now people find it acceptable that these people are being put into these camps, um, these immigrant camps, and they're being prepared for something. Um, and we don't really know what that's going to be yet, but it's clear that stuff, that these, these sort of things are happening and it's not great. Um, and now we're even starting to learn that 
Um, ICE has been doing things they shouldn't be doing. They've been performing hysterectomies on immigrants. Um, the Border Patrol is, is firing weapons at, at immigrants arriving at the border. Um, that that could easily be be um, thought of as, as an attempt at extermination of these people. Um, and that's kind of terrifying to think that it's happening on US, U.S. soil. And of course, they're going to deny that that's what they're doing. Uh, this is a picture of the, the last chief of ICE um, denying that he was doing anything wrong in his detention centers before he resigned. Um, and ICE has repeatedly declined that they have really created inhumane demission, uh, conditions within their detention centers, despite many whistleblowers um, and a lot of evidence pointing towards the fact that we're doing terrible things in these centers. Um, and President Trump also denies any knowledge of wrongdoing as well, right? He's, he's not saying that he's doing anything wrong, of course. Um, and so, um, you know, it's, um, you know, it's, it's kind of stark, but it's a conclusion that um, genocide can happen anywhere. Um, you need to look for the warning signs where you live, even in the United States. And we need to fight against the hatred and division that leads us there. Um, and a more uh, personal, but also poignant note about what's happening right now, um, one way to end this is to vote. One candidate is obviously um, a, a for this happening, and one is, is very much so against it. Um, so voting this November is going to be an important tool against stopping a, a genocide from happening within the United States borders um, now in 2020. So uh, please vote and please think about this when you're, you're deciding who you're going to vote for. Uh, I hope you've learned a lot about um, this historical term um, and that it was helpful for you. Thank you again for watching. Have a great day.